why the Irish DNA is so unique. For years, scholars believed Ireland's story began with the Celts around 2,500 years ago. But recent DNA research has blown that simple belief apart. Underneath the surface lies a far older and more mysterious genetic legacy, one that connects the Irish not just to Europe, but to ancient farmers from the Middle East and seafarers from the Mediterranean. It is also revealed that Irish blood holds secrets from civilizations long forgotten. What are those secrets and how did the Irish DNA survive? Before we get right into it, let us know in the comments. How do you think the ancient farmers and seafarers became settlers in Ireland? The Hidden Origins of Irish DNA and What Came Before the Celts Long before the Celts ever set foot on the Emerald Isle, Ireland had already been home to humans for thousands of years. After the last ice age ended around 10,000 years ago, the first settlers arrived. Not with swords or chariots, but with spears, stone tools, and survival skills honed in the wild. These people were hunter-gatherers, most likely traveling by boat or crossing land bridges from what is now mainland Europe. Following herds, seasons, and instinct, they came into a cold, untamed Ireland, covered in forests, rivers, and animals that hadn't yet learned to fear humans. And despite the brutal conditions, they stayed, adapted and laid the foundations of Irish history. What's even more fascinating is what their DNA has revealed. Thanks to scientific advances, we now know that a significant portion of modern Irish DNA comes directly from these early people, and these ancient ancestors likely had darker skin and lighter eyes. This is an unexpected combination by today's standards, but one that makes sense when you consider how genetics shift with migration and climate. The story doesn't stop there. In fact, it's just getting started. Around 4000 BC, another wave of settlers arrived, and they changed everything. These were the Neolithic farmers, and they came from the Middle East. They brought with them the revolutionary idea of agriculture. For the first time, the people of Ireland weren't just chasing or uprooting their food, they were growing it. These farmers were physically different, too, with lighter skin and darker hair and their genes began to mix with the native population as they intermarried and copulated. They built stone monuments like Newgrange and left behind pottery, tools, and traces of organized society. This merging of old and new created something entirely unique, a genetic and cultural identity that would soon become the core of Irish ancestry. But it didn't stop with the Neolithic Age. Around 2500 BC, during the Bronze Age, yet another wave of people called the Bell Beaker people arrived. This time, they came from the Mediterranean and other parts of Europe, and they brought with them metal. More secrets of Irish history in Irish blood. They introduced bronze tools, weapons, and new technology that elevated life on the island. Their influence can still be seen in artifacts and burial sites scattered across the Irish countryside, and yes, once again, their genes mixed with that of the locals, adding more diversity to the Irish gene pool. The next set to migrate to Ireland were the Celts. The Celts' arrival in Ireland is debated, but they likely originated from Central Europe and migrated westward. Theories suggest they arrived between 5000 BC and 100 BC, with some linking their presence to the Beaker culture's migration around 2000 BC. The Celts introduced their language, art, and societal frameworks. Archaeological findings like Latene artifacts and Ogham inscriptions support their presence, revealing a structured society with chieftains, warriors, and druids, and a spiritual world connected to nature. When scientists continued to dig deeper into the genetic story of Ireland, they quickly realized this wasn't just about one island's past. Ireland's history is actually a centuries-long tale of migration, adaption, and cultural mixing that stretches far beyond its shores. Take the Vikings, for example. We usually picture them as terrifying warriors in horned helmets, raiding villages and setting fires. And yes, they did all that. But what we don't often hear is how their arrival in Ireland ended up being very transformative. The Vikings didn't just loot and leave. They came back, stayed, and left a permanent imprint, not just on Irish towns and culture, but in Irish DNA, too. The first Viking raids hit the Irish coast in the late 700s. Monasteries were their favorite targets. They were rich, poorly defended, and packed with treasure. But something surprising happened as time went on. Instead of just raiding, the Vikings began settling. 
They built towns like Dublin, Waterford, and Limerick, which quickly became centers of trade, culture, and commerce. They also developed to be thriving cities where Norse and Irish people began to intermarry and form communities. Thanks to modern genetic testing, we now know that this mixing went much deeper than anyone guessed. In fact, if you're Irish and your ancestors are from the east or south coasts, there's a good chance you've got Viking blood in your veins, because about 10 to 15 percent of Irish DNA today is believed to have direct ties to those Norse settlers. That Viking legacy didn't fade when their power did. By the mid 900s, Irish kings like the legendary Brian Boru were defeating Viking forces and reclaiming territory. But the Norse influence didn't disappear. It stayed embedded in Irish cities, culture, and genetics. As Irish kingdoms regained power, Ireland entered a time of religious growth and cultural evolution. Monasteries flourished again, and the church became more connected to the wider Christian world. But Ireland wouldn't stay untouched for long. In 1169, a deposed Irish king invited Norman knights from England to help him reclaim his throne. That move changed Irish history forever. The Normans brought castles, feudalism, and a new wave of settlers. By 1240, they controlled two-thirds of the island. Ireland's Journey From Conquest to Culture and Beyond Just like the Vikings, the Normans ended up blending in. They married into Irish families, learned the language, and adopted Irish customs. This process, called Gaelicization, blurred the lines between conqueror and native. Their stone castles stood tall on the Irish lands, but it wasn't long before English rulers wanted tighter control. In the late 1400s, the Tudor conquest began, with policies like surrender and regrant, which tried to change Irish chieftains to loyal subjects of the English crown. Later came Oliver Cromwell's brutal conquest in the 1600s, which brought bloodshed, land grabs, and mass displacement. The 1700s brought the harsh penal laws that crushed Catholic rights and deepened resentment. Even with all of this, Ireland kept evolving. Then came one of the darkest chapters, the Great Famine from 1845 to 1852. British policies worsened the crisis, leading to mass starvation, emigration, and a population collapse. Millions left Ireland scattering Irish genes and stories across the globe. Through all of this, the Viking raids, Norman conquests, English rule and famine, the Irish gene pool kept adapting and surviving. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, nationalist movements were gaining serious momentum, and people were pushing harder than ever for something called home rule, a system where Ireland could govern itself while still technically remaining under the British crown. But as time passed, many realized that wasn't enough. They wanted full independence. This pressure exploded in 1916 during the Easter Rising, when Irish rebels staged an armed rebellion in Dublin. Although the rebellion was crushed within a week, it ignited a national spirit that wouldn't be silenced. Just a few years later, Ireland was at war with Britain, in what became known as the War of Independence between 1919 and 1921. That war changed everything. In 1921, a treaty was signed that split the island in two. The southern part became the Irish Free State, which would eventually grow into the Republic of Ireland. But the six counties in the north, known today as Northern Ireland, remained part of the United Kingdom. This partition created deep political and religious divisions that would haunt the island for decades. By the mid-20th century, these tensions boiled over, especially in the north. What followed was a dark and violent chapter called The Troubles. From the 1960s to the late 1990s, bombings, assassinations, riots, and sectarian violence between Irish nationalists, mostly Catholic, and Unionists, mostly Protestant, tore communities apart. It wasn't until 1998 that real peace finally began to settle in. The Good Friday Agreement was signed, bringing an official end to the violence and offering a new framework for power sharing and cooperation in Northern Ireland. It was a moment of hope after years of fear, and from that point on, Ireland began to shift into a different kind of story, one of cultural celebration, creativity, and international recognition. 
Today, Ireland is known not just for its deep and diverse history, but also for its music, dance, and art scenes. Traditional Irish music, fiddles, bodhrans, and haunting ballads are still highly cherished, but artists like Enya, Hosier, have taken those roots and created sounds that resonate across the globe. If you enjoyed this exploration of the Irish DNA and how its history was shaped by various historical events and migrations, including Neolithic farmers, bell beaker culture, Celtic tribes, Viking raids, Norman invasions, and British colonization, then hit the like button. To stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people, subscribe to our next channel so you don't miss our next videos.